Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the CMMG Banshee 9mm. Previously we did a video on the 5.7 version of the Banshee and now we're looking at the 9mm. Now I did a review on the Guard, which was the full size version of this. This is the pistol version of the Banshee uh, quite some time ago and it was something that I was extremely impressed with and a lot of it had to do with the new operating system, the radio delayed blowback. Now the radio delayed blowback makes a major difference when you're comparing it to a standard, say, Colt pattern. 9mm, which is what we're going to be taking a look at, the operating system. Now the Colt pattern is a standard direct blowback rifle. So basically we have a heavy mass bolt carrier, and then we have a very heavy buffer. So basically what we have to operate this rifle is when the rifle fires, the mass of the bolt and the mass of the spring is what keeps the bolt closed or, or gives you enough delay so it allows the cartridge to leave the barrel and the cartridge to be safely extracted and ejected. Now this is a, this is a lot of weight here that we have to have to do that, but that's how a, a blowback will work. There's no locking mechanism on here. With the CMMG with a radio delayed blowback, We have a significantly lighter bolt carrier group and a much lighter buffer. And to put this into perspective, the weight of the bolt carrier, which is used on the Colt pattern, 15.8 ounces. Radial delay blowback, 11.6. Major difference. Look at the weight of the buffer and recoil spring, 9.2. Radial delayed, 4.0. So you're seeing the exact amount that you're decreasing in weight by the use of the system. So how do we how do we decrease all this weight? Well, first of all, what we're doing is with the radial delayed blowback, you'll see from the photograph where we have a rotating bolt versus a standard bolt. What you have here with the Colt 9mm pattern, this is not a bolt carrier. That is an entire bolt. There are no two separate components. That is all one piece of steel. Just like the standard AR-15 or M16 series, you have a rotating bolt, but you have no gas system. What you have is the radials on here that lock into the locking lugs on the barrel extension. So as the barrel, as the, as the rifle fires, as the barrel moves to the rear, the bolt carrier moves rearward, the delay is caused by the unlocking of those radials until the point where it's free from the uh, from the locking lugs on the barrel extension so it can move rearward. So you have a physically locked breech when you fire. Well, as I said, now we've decreased weight. We've decreased, uh, you know, all the mass that's, that's in there for not only the bolt carrier, but the buffer assembly as well. But also by having a locked breech, your pressure is going to be more gone uh, than when it unlocks. So you're meeting less blowback into your face with a rail delay blowback than you are with a standard blowback because your, your powder is going to be more blown out of the barrel because, again, it's, it's locked. You're having that delay uh, for that powder to burn. So the overall system... Stronger, lighter, more reliable. It's more uh, reliable and suppressed as well. Uh, again, the having that delay, that lock, gives you a lot more strength and durability with ammunition as well. So that's the thing that really sets it apart. And I have to say, when you look at a lot of the different operating mechanisms that you're seeing on these types of rifles, you're seeing delayed blowback, blowback. You're seeing uh, the radial delay blowback. You're seeing uh, some actual gas pistons. Uh, there's a lot of different types that are out there. And uh, I've been very, very impressed with the radio delay blowback for as far as the reliability. It's there. It gives you a lot of benefits when you're firing suppressed. And we fired uh, this particular rifle significantly suppressed. This particular uh, pistol here, uh, I have to say that we had probably close to 500 to five to 700 rounds through it. We shot quite a bit through it, all different types of ammunition, just testing the reliability of the delayed uh, radio blowback. Plus what we did with the CMMG Guard uh, you know, a year or so ago, which is another 1,000 rounds I think we put through that. So we've had a lot of rounds through these, suppressed and unsuppressed. So this is the real benefit is that big loss of the, the lack of weight, the loss of weight with the radio delayed, and then also the strength that it offers you by giving you a lock breach. The 9mm cartridge has an extreme amount of ranges for as far as pressures is concerned, whether it be because of the, the weight of the projectile or because of the uh, velocities and whatnot. Now, as the, as the Banshee comes, it comes without any weights that are installed. 
Now, if you're put in a position where you're firing suppressed with a very heavy type of ammunition, we have three different weights. For your most extreme conditions, you're looking at a weight of, uh, of 10 ounces. And that would go right in the back of the carrier. And then you would take your pin and you would drop it right in. This would be about equal to that of the weight of a standard uh, 9mm bolt. And then when you have lesser conditions, you, you will have here, this is a 2 ounce and then this is a 3 ounce. Now, everything that I've done so far, every type of ammunition that I've tested, I've not had to put any of these in. And this is a kit that's sold separate by CMMG as their action tuning uh, kit. So for as far as uh, when you buy this Banshee, do you need this? Quite frankly, from what I've seen, no. Uh, it works fine with any kind of ammunition that I put in it, any kind of commercial ammunition, it works great. Uh, you'll know if you need it. Uh, you'll have problems with short stroking. Or you'll have problems with failures to eject. Uh, you'll know if uh, the ammunition that you're using is going to require uh, additional weight on here. But from, from my experience, uh, these have not been necessary. Now, while we have it apart, while we have the rifle apart, utilizes the Glock magazines. Uh, this particular magazine came with Glock Factory 33-shot magazines, as opposed to the, the Colt Pattern um, stick magazine, which is based off of the Uzi magazine. Now, when you look at the two of these magazines, well, obviously, the Glock magazine, you have a commonality. Uh, with the Glock pistols, they're everywhere. Uh, so there's no question why you would want to manufacture your, your pistol to take this caliber uh, magazine. The Glock magazines are significantly easier to load uh, because of the way that they sit, the double column the way that they sit. Now, the Colt magazines, one thing about the Colt pattern magazines, the Uzi pattern magazines, is when it comes to locking open on the last shot, it does 100% of the time. The Glock magazines in these pistols tends to be very temperamental. I probably have over 30 different Glock magazines that are a mixture of Glock, Magpul, and Advanced Elite Tactical Systems. And it was finicky for as far as locking open in the last shot. And it just wasn't because it was Glock magazine or it was a, it was a Magpul or because of ETS. It was temperamental with the earlier Glock magazines. If you have a Gen 1 magazine, uh, some of the earlier ones, sometimes they wouldn't even fit in the magazine well because they would swell. Uh, then you would have issues with them um, locking back on the last shot. Uh, then the Gen or the Gen Two type magazines, where it was the more of the American ones that were drop free. A vast amount of those worked reliably. Occasionally, you would have, depending on the follower, whether it would lock open or not. Uh, the later versions uh, didn't have much of a problem at all uh, with, them, with them with them locking open. Then we get into the uh, the magazines that were manufactured by Magpul, 100% reliable, but um, we did have intermittents uh, with the locking back in the last shot. ETS, 100% reliable. Again, occasionally you would have problems uh, with with the locking up on the last shot. It's very it was very temperamental. Um, it, it just happens to be an issue that comes with uh, trying to make a magazine release of this type for this uh, this type of a pistol. Uh, there are manufacturers who totally eliminated uh, the lock open on the last shot magazine because that was because it was such a problem they couldn't fix it. Uh, when Quarter Circle 10 was uh, first coming out with theirs, I remember they had a nightmare. They had a couple of revisions trying to get it to work. But the, the all of these particular pistols using the AR platform do have issues with compatibility. So if you're going to be using it in the real world, you definitely want to find magazines that work 100% all the time. And those are the ones that you want to use on the range. It doesn't see much of a difference. The problem is not feeding. Uh, you know, with the exception of the Gen 1 magazines that swelled, I couldn't even fit them in the magazine well. It was never a problem with the feeding. It was always a problem with just the bolt locking back on the last shot. As we see, we're using a short buffer because it's all that's necessary. We have a flat recoil spring as well. The flat recoil spring gives you a more bearing surface. It's more durable than the standard recoil spring. And so definitely for the higher impact you get with a 9mm because of its pressure curve, it certainly is a benefit. So we'll go over some of the other features on this as well. Now the barrel, we have a 4150 chrome only vanadium barrel. Five, again, five inches with a nitride coating on it. As we can see, we have a threaded barrel with a cap. Now the silencer I used, this was my Octane 9. Now, my, unfortunately, I don't have that right now. I just sent that in to have some maintenance done. Uh, that poor suppressor has had so much abuse through it and so many rounds through it that uh, it was time for it to get cleaned and, and taken a look at. So we don't have that to show you, but uh, probably a good two, 300 rounds was fired uh, completely suppressed with this. Now, the receivers are 75T6 aircraft grade aluminum. We have a CMMG AMBI charging handle on here as well. These parts can be bought for you to upgrade your, your, uh, your rifle or carbine as well. 
Lower receiver is basic. You have an ambidextrous safety on it. You have a Magpul Mo pistol grip. Your safety is right in front of your trigger finger. Works very, very well. And again, like we talked about, depending on the magazine, uh, some of them would drop through, some of them wouldn't. It just depends on the magazine. You're dealing with polymer magazines. You know, sometimes you don't have as uh, much control uh, of them when they swell or what or whatnot. So, not not a fault of the design of the rifle at all or the pistol at all. It's just it just happens to be the way the polymer magazines work. Looking at your left hand side, standard bolt catch, standard safety. Now, for as far as finish is concerned, I prefer black. You know, the term black rifle. I prefer black rifle, uh, so I keep everything black. However. You have a very big option of flat dark earth, burnt bronze, sniper gray, titanium, olive grab, midnight bronze, bazooka green, slate, stormtrooper white, or the graphite black that you see right here. They'll they will do all of that. So uh, this is probably one of the first time I took a gun and actually shot steel with it. Fortunately, the range that I uh, I met they now put in a lot of steel targets. So uh, that's how we tested this, both suppressed and unsuppressed. So we're gonna go to the range. We're gonna see how this one shoots. magazine. We're going to try the Glock, we're going to try the uh, Elite Tactical Systems, and we're going to try the uh, Raider Old Glock magazines. Yes, magazine, and it didn't want to stay in, stay locked in place. I'll be goddamn. Now, we had put a lot of different types of ammunition through the CMMG uh, Banshee. Uh, starting off with the SIG M17 124 grain plus P, we had a muzzle velocity of 1,428 feet per second on the 5 inch barrel. SIG's 147 grain subsonic, uh, 1,004 feet per second. Black Hills 115 grain full metal jacket with a velocity of 1,165 feet per second. Federal Syntec in 147 grain subsonic, 1,035 feet per second. Federal American Eagle 124 grain subsonic, 1,009 feet per second, as well as the Remington UMC 115 grain full metal jacket at 1,144 feet per second. Now, looking at the ammunition, there was one particular one that stood out to me, and it was the subsonic 124 grain Federal. That cartridge traditionally has caused me problems in everything I put it in, whether it was suppressed or unsuppressed. And the Ravenslade Blowback Banshee ate it up uh, without, without a problem at all. In fact, uh, with that, all you earlier heard was the click of the, of the action on it. Reliability was 100%. Uh, we had no issues with any of the ammunition. It liked everything. 
Um, we found no difference in suppressed versus unsuppressed for accuracy. Put it on or take it off, there was no issues. Now, for as far as a small, compact pistol, this is an ideal setup right here. You have an incredible locking system. You have something that'll work very well with higher pressure ammunition. You have something that will get less blowback in your face when you fire it suppressed. And something like this, I would fire mostly suppressed. Uh, in fact, I didn't shoot too much of it without it. Um, you know, the overall quality of CMMG has always been excellent. Um, I'm looking forward to looking at some of their other versions as well, uh, 40 caliber and, and so on. Uh, they're doing a lot. The, the, the whole thing with the real delayed blowback is the larger the caliber, the better it works. So it works great with a 9mm. Well, they start putting it in a 45 or a 10mm, it's going to work even better uh, for as far as the way the delay works on it. The real delayed blowback offers you a significant amount of flexibility on what you can do with calibers in such small packages. Now, the site I have on here is unfortunately no longer in production, uh, but they will be coming back out. Uh, we will be talking about them when they do. This was uh, DI Optical. Um, so there's a new company that has bought them out and will be starting to import into the country, hopefully within the next year. And I will keep you up to date because the quality of the DI Optic scopes has always been incredible. Uh, I've been very, very pleased with them. I've been using them for years. Unfortunately, the company fell on some hard times for as far as uh, cash was concerned. Uh, they shut their doors, but now they're going to be reopening. It's a Korean-based company. And again, they make excellent uh, optics for relatively, well, a very, very competitive price. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better share. Thank you.